Hi, this is PDF Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com, and this is tutorial 250 in our little hack and slash tutorial series. Uh, now, where we left off before, let me just go ahead and open up uh, Unity here. Uh, if we pull up our little green sticky here, uh, we'd actually just started working on uh, playing around with the movement to get them to turn the way we wanted to. Now, let me move that off to the side. We'll actually start the project up. It has been a while since we've played around with this project. Um, see, I, I believe I did get them turning properly, but I think there was a few things I wanted to work out. Um, that's right, I was making the, the turning code in the actual uh, AI script, and I don't want it to be. I want it to be in the other script. That's right. And the main reason why I want it to be in the other script is because I want the exact same code to be used to, well, rotate anything that needs to be rotated in the game. Uh, that would there if I come along and I find something that's more efficient or I uh, just want to change it for some reason. I only have it in one place. I don't have to go through and change it in like the player script and in the mob AI script and wherever else I put it. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's go ahead and we'll open up uh, our script here. I uh, probably have that under move. And I am sending some messages here for the rotate. Um, see, it's right down here, though. Uh, ba -ba -bum. I'm actually going to ignore this just for a little bit, just to uh, get a little bit more time to research it. I'm actually going to move on in this one here to uh, setting up our attack tree. So if we go ahead again and we go and look at our little green paper here. Uh, when we're in the attack, we want to be able to move all the time. Uh, so basically, uh, you can attack while moving. Uh, maybe later on, we might want to add some sort of penalty, maybe 50% movement speed or something like that. But just for now, uh, I just want to be able to move and attack at the same time. Uh, so uh, we're going to be getting rid of this line soon. And we also have to decide what uh, one we're going to do. Are we going to use a ranged attack, a melee attack, or a magic attack? Now, right now, we actually don't even have any of these systems themselves set up. But we can actually implement the, uh, the decision to make one. And we're going to say that for, for now, uh, to start with, every mob has, has the ability to do all three of these. So I'm going to move that back off to the side. And I'm going to go ahead and open up model develop again. And I'm actually going to move into the attack. And if we look here, uh, we have the debug log attack. Um, ba -bum. We're just jumping straight to move here. So I'm actually going to change this. And now we're actually going to uh, go to attack. And let me just check here to see if we actually have a state for attack or uh, we do. That's uh, fine. So we're going to come down here and set the state to be attack. Um, I'm just deciding like, we can still call move here. Uh, we're setting the state to search. Like I said, it has been a while since I've looked at this. So it's going to be a few things I'll have to play around with. So when the state is set to search, decide search. So it just keeps bouncing back and forth. Now we do have, like I said, the, the option to set the state to uh, attack. Let me come up here and look at our states that we actually do have defined. We have idle init. Now I know I want these because I just and set up because I use these uh, a lot in a finite state machine. A uh, search I want because I want him to be able to search for the player. So when he comes active, he may not automatically run towards the player. I want to be able to search, see if I can see the player. Maybe the player has some sort of uh, uh, invisibility or something like that, something to lessen his detection. So I know I want that. I know I want to decide. Uh, in the decision, I want to decide what my action should be. And I might not actually have attack anymore. And if I don't have attack, I don't need retreat or flee as well. Uh, for now, I'm still going to leave them in the tree, I guess, since I do have them defined. Uh, I'm going to break the tree, though, right here. And just add a comment. Uh, we'll be removing the following uh, states. And I'm actually going to come down here. And we're going to come into the decide. And we're calling move. 
And I'm not going to call move anymore. Um, see, we have to decide. Here's where we actually want to decide what we want to do. And move will be called in here while it attacks. I'm actually going to take it out of here. And I'm going to leave move in here. So the first thing he'll do is move if he needs to. And then we'll set this state back to search because maybe the player went invisible or something like that. And right here is where we actually want to figure out exactly you know, what our player is going to do. Now there's three options for him to do. Uh, either melee, magic, or uh, ranged. So we'll, we'll set that up here. Sorry about that. The Pikachus are in the background making a little bit too much noise running around their nice big wheel. But uh, anyway, they seem to have calmed down a little bit. So I'm going to go on and continue with this recording. Uh, so what we're getting at is we want to create some sort of uh, little bit of code here that will actually decide what uh, our mob is actually going to do and then call the appropriate method. And for now, let's just say that every mob can do all three. And the one that he's actually going to pick at any given point in time uh, will just be random. Uh, so there's going to be three different options. So I'm just going to create a variable here. And it's just going to be an integer. And I'm just going to call it uh, option. I'm just going to call it opt. And I'm going to set this equal to, there's a few different randoms we can use. I'm just going to use random dot uh, range. And if we look here, I'm pretty sure we've used this already. If not, uh, basically you just want to generate a random number. Uh, you want to pick the minimum that you can get. And I'm just going to say zero. And then the maximum. Now you have to be careful here uh, because um, in some of them it'll say like, you know, for here int max, and you'll think that it's the maximum number it can generate. Uh, but sometimes it's actually one lower than that. So for instance, if I put a two in here, uh, I'm definitely going to debug log this out because sometimes it uh, doesn't actually, like, depending what random function you're using, sometimes you don't actually uh, get a two. So the only option you'll get would be zero and one. And if that's the case, uh, just increase it to three. So like I said, I want to debug log this out. And I'm just going to say, um, see, it's just opt. All right. Uh, I'm not going to set the state to search anymore. Uh, oh, sorry. Yes, I am. And attack, we can actually just, since we're not going to be using this method anymore, we could probably switch it over to something like melee attack, range attack, whatnot. Uh, but for now, let's just run it through and see what numbers we're getting out of here just to see if we're actually getting you know different things and we're getting the values that we want so i'm going to go back into unity and we'll start this up and i'll clear it right away after it starts up and let's go ahead and run through and we'll run up to one of the mobs actually i only have one mob here so cuts down on uh, the debug log statements and if we look here like i said I'm only getting zeros in ones. So, whoops, we're going to go ahead and increase that to three. Uh, it's a little bit deceiving, like, like I said when, you, when I was typing it up. Uh, just quickly check it and just make sure. Uh, now I'm going to come down here and just make a switch statement for now. And we're going to switch on the opt, our option. Uh, we're just going to make two cases and our default case. So we'll say case zero, we're going to do something. And of course, at the end, we're going to have a break. And then we're going to say case one and a break. And uh, I usually have a default, but I think in this case, I'm actually going to say case uh, two break. And then I'll have a default. And this is just in case something actually ever does happen where uh, my uh, opt it is not zero, one, two, or three. I'm just actually going to say debug dot log, and I'm just going to output a string that says uh, option and colon, and I'm just going to quickly append on the opt what the value is 
is not defined. Just so I know for some reason I got a value that I should not have gotten. Uh, I can't remember if default needs a break or not. Uh, let's just save it off and we'll come back in and apparently we do. Whoops. Uh, what was my error? Cannot fall through. So looks like I just need a break here. And there we go. And right at the very end here. Well, we've got the switch set up. Doesn't actually do anything, it just breaks out. Let's actually go ahead and create three different methods. So I'm gonna leave this attack method here just for now, uh, even though we're not using it. I'm just gonna make three different methods for it. Uh, so private void, and I'll just say uh, melee attack. And I'm just gonna debug dot log. And I'm not sure why I'm doing that. Uh, we'll just say uh, melee attack. And I forgot the three at the start. And I'm just gonna cut and paste that. To back that up and we'll switch over to magic attack. and ranged attack. There we go. And I'm actually gonna put a bunch of space here just because I know, I just wanna focus on this. Uh, and of course we're gonna have to call these methods. So I'm gonna come up here and say melee attack. Uh, we haven't actually defined which ones are actually gonna be. So I'm just actually gonna keep the same thing here. Uh, actually, I'm going to make magic last. So I'm actually going to say ranged is two. Now we will be changing this a little bit later on, but for now, I just want to get the actual functions up and running. Uh, at least with the basic logic in them. Anyway, uh, let's save that off. We'll go ahead. We'll head back into Unity and we're going to try this out. Uh, I have a couple warnings here. And they have to do with the train editor. I have not updated yet. I don't even know if there is an update yet, uh, but that's fine. It's nothing to do with my code. Uh, I'm gonna see, we'll just start this up. We're gonna go ahead, clear this. We'll head back in. And he should be picking different types of attacks uh, when he gets within range. So there we go, we see him going through all these different attacks. Now, of course, when you're really far away, he should not uh, be picking melee and stuff like that, but this is uh, code we can fill in as we go along. Uh, right now, we do actually have him deciding on a different attack each frame. And, well, it's not exactly each frame, but every couple frames, it's a different attack he's picking. Uh, more than one a second. So we're actually gonna have to slow him down a bit. Uh, not in code, not necessarily, uh, Know, like putting a delay in deciding what attack to get, but just to check to see if he's actually ready for another attack. Uh, but anyway, let's just pause this and we'll just take a quick look here. Zero, one, hmm, I don't see any twos. Oh, there's a two. Uh, doesn't, I guess I should have set something up to record exactly um the distribution you got a lot of twos right there but we're not really worried about making some uber elite random number generator uh, we just want wanted to be able to uh pick some sort of random number right now uh so anyway that's pretty much it for this tutorial i just wanted to get this up and running on our next set of tutorials we'll actually go ahead and start flushing i guess a bit more of this code out uh we still don't have a weapon form so he can't really do anything yet but uh i'll decide uh, that in between the tutorials anyway i'll see you in the next one bye bye